I didn't make it around to all of the tables, and I apologize for this area of the room because I like to do that. That reminded me of teaching, and it was kind of fun. Um, I think every table I stopped at said, huh, what are we supposed to be doing? <laughs> and I get that too, because that was sort of my feeling when I first started this. I'm going to... I, I'm going to go off script for just a minute because I want to tell you something that happened and, and I can't figure out a way to say this. It, this is not by means of, well, it has two possible effects. One is it's going to sound a little arrogant and I don't mean to do that at all. And the other is it's going to scare the daylights out of you and I don't really want to do that. But um, we met in Austin a week and a half ago and uh, most of the national consultants were there that are working with. Uh, by the way, the Dana Center, somebody just said, what's the Dana Center? The Dana Center is where Uri Treisman is. In, it's at the University of Texas in Austin. And he, it is a fantastic place. And they do a lot of consulting with states all over the place. And there is kind of a spin-off. I think it would be wrong to say it was actually part of the Dana Center, but maybe sort of. A, a group called Agile Mind that is very instrumental in the work that uh, we are doing to develop this assessment. And they know a lot about how to use electronic media for assessment. We'll come back to more of that later. But to tell you what happens sometime, when we had met in July, we were given um, homework, those of us who were consultants. And we were divided up into groups, and my group was going to be the high school functions group, and I had other people in that group. And we were supposed to write some claims and evidence for our areas in, at the cluster domain and standards level. And so, because I guess I was always a student that kind of tried to do her homework, I did it. But I realized I had no idea how to do that. So I did the best I could. I used a lot of language from the standards. I only got cluster level written. I tried a domain one, wasn't real happy with that, didn't even tackle the subject level was feeling like I was going to get at best of maybe a C plus, you know, when I turned this in. But I sent it off to Kathy Seeley, who's in charge of this product, project with the Dana Center. And I got to the meeting almost, well, two and a half weeks ago on a Tuesday. And I couldn't get in. I flew in Tuesday morning and didn't get there until about 11 o'clock in the morning. And when I walked in, all of the Dana Center folks, because this was a sort of a day ahead of when national people were coming in, were looking at what I'd sent to Kathy on the, you know, screen about as big as that. And my feeling was, what's happening here? Well, it turns out nobody else did their homework. <laughs> so all of a sudden I'm thinking, this was like a first draft. I wasn't even really happy with this, and, but it was the only thing they had. So we started sort of from there. That's where we are with this. We don't know exactly what that evidence looks like. The folks from uh, Evidence Centered Design, Howard Everson even said, you know, we've never done this with a set of standards. And when he looked at it and he kind of looked at the language that I had tried to adopt, at the cluster level, probably evidence statements will be pretty close to standard statements. Pretty close. There may be a couple others, but they're pretty close to standard statements. What they look like at a domain level, I'm not entirely sure. You know, I, I really, I mean, we've tried some things. Don't misunderstand me. We've tried them. But we don't know exactly what, where the language comes from. At the subject level, we're kind of looking at those cover pages for, for pulling out what are the big ideas from that conceptual category or for that grade level. And those are, the, uh, we've got, so we've got a couple things at the subject level, at least in high school. And I, I think the grade levels also do. Um, what we are writing are these prototypes? And, and again, there were a couple questions about that when I went around, so I want to clear that up a little. Ultimately, this is going to be a huge financial contract for some vendor. Now, I, this is, you know, hope I don't get in trouble with this. But it might be Pearson, it could be Educational Testing Service, it could be any one of a number of things that I'm not even thinking about. So I, th I have no idea who the vendor is going to be. It is a big deal because it's going to involve 24 states. They're going to do an assessment for 24 states. And what's being done, I guess, the, what we're trying to do with, I, I think I've got the grade levels right, third and fourth grade, sixth and seventh grade, and functions in high school, we are going to write claims and evidence for the cluster level in some, it won't be exhaustive, but cluster level, some will be at domain level, some will be at subject level. Then we're going to write 
task prototypes and tasks. Task prototypes are one of those kind of nebulous things for me right now. I need to see what one looks like. Um, tasks, I think we all maybe know some ideas, and I'll, I can talk a little bit about the kinds of tasks we're thinking of at this point. We're trying to write this in such a way that when the vendor is hired, they can, first of all, look at the kind of tasks that we came up with for each prototype, and they can look in their test banks and see things that they might be able to use, or they can develop other tasks, and we want those task prototypes and tasks to be clear enough. We'll have descriptions with each task model about do this, don't do this. You know, what isn't good as well as what is, as much as we can, and the goal there is to provide guidance for the vendor so that what we get is a test that really assesses what we want to assess. Writing the claims and evidence is the statement of what we want to assess. It is critically important. It is what the, what the field test will focus on. It is what the interviews during the field test will ask about. It is what the, the assessment design will focus on as it you know, sets out how all of this is going to be. It, it really is a foundation. It's a grounding. It's how we're going to show what we're doing. And it's critically important to know we don't really know what it's going to look like quite yet. We're working on that.